that didn't actually make any noise. I was kind of hoping it would. Hi, welcome. What's up? Do some news. Mike B. A. Garifoni, AI News with chat. Who are composed of mostly real people. Hi, everybody. How's it going? News, news, news. So, I took in way too many boba. <laughs> Yeah, chat real, verify, verification. Uh, point to the sidewalk and these pictures or whatever. Click on all the pictures with the with the handsome gentleman in it. All right, go. Ah, so. Only AI chatters here. <laughs> Soon. Soon. There was somebody just sold camera equipment in the parking lot sunglasses. <laughs> How could you tell? <laughs> Do I still look sun-kissed from sitting in a, in a Starbucks parking lot for 15 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a little I'm still a little flush for being out in the sun for so long. <laughs> oh wait, 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 I got you. Let's do some AI news. There you go. Okay. All right. I'm maintaining control of your boy Darnell. Todd, you got you guys. All right. First up. First up. First. Google had their I.O. on Wednesday. We watched it. We streamed it. We followed as much as we could. It was almost entirely based on A.I. So I plucked a few things from there to go over things that could be impactful to your daily life because that's what Google does. They try to get involved with the masses. So they try to make things uh, uh, accessible, usable, etc. That's kind of their thing, right? It's not like all of us trying to run AI shit at home where we have like 14 different programs a Python script this and a batch file and I gotta update my GitHubs and I gotta pull and push and do all these things just to make a stupid AI thing come on every once in a while and tell a joke. <laughs> He's not listening right now. <laughs> have you heard about AI? <laughs> doing Google doing what Picky the Brain never could. That's right. So, so yes, Google is definitely going the route of trying to get as many people as they can under their umbrella to use what is probably not going to be the best available LLM, AI, whatever uh, to people, but it'll be there right in the tools that you're using. So first, first, they're introducing Palm 2, which is their uh, scalable... Uh, like I guess you could say like GPT like LLM, like basically it's their AI that they've programmed with 540 billion parameters and it scales small enough that it could work on a phone. So that way you don't have to necessarily worry about being connected to an API or the internet and all that shit. Where's my Google Glasses with AI? Soon, 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 soon. Also, it's multilingual. Uh, it ha it's better at math. Then up allegedly other things because it was trained on math. It's apparently really good at code. As a matter of fact, a lot of the stuff that they introduced seemed to be geared towards coders. Uh, not initially in, the, in what I have here, but just looking at uh, uh, what we have for um, da, 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 for like you know, hot button things that came out it was pretty much a lot of like coding stuff. Uh, but we're going to Google. I'm uh, sorry, Bard, the new Google or whatever. Uh, the wait list. Well, it was removed, so you could get in, you could try it yourself, you could ask it a question, you know, like, uh, tell me a story about an AI that worked as a Wendy's uh, drive through order taker, right? You could send that to it, let it, let it feed on that, let, let it chew on that for a second. Bar just got boosted and did a bunch of things chat GTP can't. So here it is. Sure, it's a story about AI that worked as a Wendy's drive through order taker. The year is 2023. Artificial intelligence advanced to the point to where it can now be used as a variety of everyday tasks. <laughs> Current year. Uh, including taking orders at drive throughs Wendy's is one of the first fast food chains to adopt this technology. And they're using it at a pilot location in Ohio. <laughs> Okay, I honestly didn't think that I was really going to go through and implement like actual current news. I was not ready for that. <laughs> I thought I was just going to make some shit up. <laughs> so, I, yes, it's true. Ma'am, this is a, Wendy, a Wendy's. It's a real thing. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's happening. AI chatbot and chatbot to replace human order takers at Wendy's drive through It is in Ohio. They're working. They're trying it out at one location. Uh, and it has, has access to the interwebs. Yes. So, I mean... Honestly, that was a, this is a great accidental demonstration of what Bard is supposed to bring to the table that others can't, right? Google is, Google, they have all the current, current, current everything, supposedly, right? So they should be able to feed a monster and you should be able to go through it and find stuff. Uh, and I guess like this. 
You can make a fanfic out of things that happened yesterday. <laughs> can we get Darnell take orders? Yes, technically you could. Yeah, I mean, it's not hard to reprogram Darnell to do other things. You know, like we did for Phasmophobia. You're stuck in Phasmophobia, all that stuff. I did it again to something else. I can't remember what. But anyway, so yes, it is happening. Uh, AI chatbot to replace human order takers. Uh, it says, according to Wendy's chief executive, Todd Penninger, uh, the test bot will be <laughs> very conversational. And some customers might not even realize they are talking to a human employee. I don't know too many order takers that are particularly conversational. Welcome to Wendy's. How may I take your order? Blah, blah, blah. And that's it. That's pretty much all you get. You know, I don't like it. Is this order correct on the screen? Can you look at the screen and see if it's correct? Is that right? Okay, thank you. Can you pull up, please? <laughs> There's not really a lot of conversation going on there. <laughs> <laughs> talking if just take my order yeah i don't want to talk <laughs> they kept pushing the whole like jbc thing like oh yeah man you gotta know the key words and shit you know hit menu item like a jbc a junior baker chick junior baker cheeseburger I I, I I i don't go to wendy's that often where like i know all the hidden menu items uh, I don't even know if there really is, you know, um, which which most as watch most access not be recognized. That's why they're in Ohio. <laughs> Ohio is pretty milk toast American English, just flat, just flat, no access, just flat. <laughs> when is this based in Ohio? That's besides the point. Actually, uh, somebody said, and I think it's a great idea. They should make the uh, the chatbot order takers. Um, based off of the data they submit from the Twitter account. Let her talk, let, 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 you know, let it, let it talk like her, right? From Twitter. Everybody knows the Wendy Twitter account, right? It was one of the first, it was the pioneer in sarcastic Twitter, business Twitter accounts. It was number one it's in the history books. Can I wait to get AI from McDonald's so I can uh, get, order a double QP cheese with bacon without some guy asking, want that with menu? <laughs> Put a drunk redneck in front of it. And then the Wendy's drive through started telling me a story. For a few minutes, all he wanted was some food. If the Wendy's bought Flurry with me, I'd buy more. I mean, it's possible. I guess you could just sit there and try to reprogram it. I'm sure people will, right? <laughs> Thank, this, thank you for visiting Wendy's. Can I take your order, please? Like, you are now a phone sex worker. We're trapped in an elevator together. <laughs> What's your next move? <laughs> you are Darnell. Let's know what it is. Some people will find the gate breaking keyboard. Oh, yes. People will find a way. People will find. I love the way you rub your fries on me. <laughs> Ooh, all that salt and grease. <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> They're also adding, as you saw with Bard, uh, you know, where it links to like current events, which is pretty dope, uh, or at least it relates to current events. Uh, they're also adding uh, 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 AI to their search. This is a, uh, let's see, Windows version AI will leverage Google Clouds and generate AI and large language models. There you go. Uh, people are going to convince uh, it, it's uh, the worst words are types of burgers. Oh my God. Oh, I probably, huh? Yeah, like I have a motherfucker with fries, please. <laughs> yeah, kind of a large, dirty Sanchez. <laughs> they reset the history after each order. <laughs> yeah. So they are, as you see, supercharging their search with generative AI. They have a little demo video here. Bah, 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 with some crazy music and everything. Um, <laughs> sorry, just thinking about how many people are going to fuck with that stupid AI thing. Uh, so, yeah, they are implementing AI uh, results uh, or barred results in. And I'll pause it here so you can see it a little bit closer uh, in your new in your uh, Google search results. You know, again, Google already has like the monopoly on search. You know, when we say we're going to look something up, we say we're going to Google it. And so they're going to take advantage of that by taking uh, and, and opt, I guess, surfacing content that they feel like you're going to need. Now, uh, there are some thoughts here. So Skiffy, Dylan Skiffington, he worked, he worked with me at Zam for like two days. Um, and I still follow him on Twitter and everything. And he's got some pretty good insights because now he's been doing this for like 10 years or something, right? So he's got some pretty good insights on this. He says, most websites can only exist because of SEO traffic. With Google now taking the content and traffic, you should probably be prepared for lots more of your favorite sites to shut down. <clears throat> Yahoo! I'm gonna Yahoo it. 
<laughs> they tried really hard with that. <laughs> uh, and he says, while they're the biggest companies on earth can legally steal from millions of websites in an effort to replace them. And he said, this hurts me. So this is just a demonstration showing it. And he said, keep in mind, people hate scrolling and they hate clicking. They just want answers. With these changes, the top results will be halfway down the page. Combined with already answering the question, pushing things down so much will destroy traffic too. So, and he says, yeah, sorry not to doom and gloom. It's just hard to see how websites can emerge. Uh, websites emerge and survive in this new market. Making quality content and trying to grow organically isn't fast enough for the capitalist machine. And now you may not be able to use SEO to grow, which leaves nothing. Well, after a certain amount of time, like... We won't need, <laughs> we won't need people to write anything. <laughs> Everything will just be crowdsourced via AI. Articles will be made. Ev reviews will be made based off of how we reacted to previous games. They're going to be like, wow, there's another Legend of Zelda that came out. Like this one is so much better. This one is just as good as the past two, because historically all Legend of Zelda games get 10 out of 10. So we're going to give it a 10 out of 10, which is kind of what I feel like is happening right now. But, uh, <clears throat> I see I literally found a shitty chatbot from you.com hijacking a top spot on a common search item. Yeah. There's one site that slammed 500 ads between every sentence of paragraph are going to be gone. Oh, no. <laughs> but, that, but, but how are you supposed to make money, though? I understand. I understand. I understand. It's like, oh, no, the, the, the sites that are trying to make money using advertising because nobody wants to pay for a premium to a small site uh, is hurting your feelings. Okay. I'm sorry. How the fuck are they supposed to make money? <laughs> How are you supposed to have this? And so that's his point. That's his point. Is that, you know, without having, I mean, without with taking another hit to traffic, you already get hit with traffic because you're always modifying and adjusting SEO and all that. Uh, and you're trying to stay up to date. Most, like every article has got a link to something else within the first, like one paragraph or whatever. There's all these fucking rules. Um, and then, and now with this, it's like, oh, cool. Now that you've done all that, now we're going to move all your results even further further down the page so if you were like fourth or fifth well that's page two now nobody ever goes to page two who goes to page two in google if it's on the first page it doesn't exist so much was a generic same shit that generate money from ad revenue yeah some of them are some of them just crank out like bullshit and it's just like hella ads all over the place for sure but then there are some i mean like i said this there, there are lots like this, like the one, like what Dylan works for people like Kotaku, I hate to say it, but Kotaku, like they're trying to make, uh, uh, you know, reader experiences that also benefit their bottom line in a way that continue to make, be functional. And this is something that, that could potentially, uh, uh hurt that, um, where there's a page two. <laughs> you do not Google for page two. Yeah. You go to, you go to page two when searching for pirating streaming sites. What? <laughs> the only time I ever go to page two is I'm looking for people like reposting my content somewhere, you know? My my nudes. I'm like, don't be posting my nudes somewhere else, man. Come on. Stupid ass sites is all like, oh, here's this content for free. Can't take it down. Anyways, uh, so <clears throat> workspace also another announcement they made. Generative tools for your AI workspace. I can actually show you this right now. Um so it says, yeah, we're making workspace even more have a do AI. So this is this is supposed to be a response to uh, uh, to Microsoft's Copilot, right? It's supposed to be a way for them to be able to have full integration. Uh, I signed up with Google Workspace. I got accepted within a, a, a day, 24 hours or so. You could sign up for it as well, or Google Labs rather. And, and everything popped up. So this is the news that we're going through right now, actually. And you can see there's a little there's a little wandy boy here right here. So help me write. So basically what I'll do is I'll type in some words. Type in some words. And I'll zoom in for you guys, too. There you go. So type in some words. And then I'll do this. And I'll say, <clears throat> let me see. <clears throat> Let's elaborate on these words. see type in some words let me see cat dog house tree flower sun moon star hey it works look at that made my job easier i was going to type those words myself i just had to ask it tell it to do it and it did it for me isn't that great and then i click replace it'll put that in there oh there's all kinds of words it gave me some bonus words too i go through and i can take out words if i don't want them isn't that cool anyways <laughs> there are other functionalities other functionality as well that they're adding in uh like the ability to uh generate sheets so if you're working with sheets a lot you could go through and use it there uh there's a little video here probably play some loud music oh, or some clicking sounds or whatever uh earth, earth wind fire dog house wind oh, that's right that's right <laughs> it's pretty useful in docs and emails yeah i got an email too uh 
and it, it is it is it will um uh, you could tell it to uh elaborate on responses for you so if you're trying to write an email like like probably gonna demonstrate this video uh, you could tell it you know i'm trying to get a refund for this flight which is what they give for the demonstration i'm trying to get a refund on this flight and so it'll basically look at the email history or the invoice history or whatever that you give it and then it'll write uh, an email it's basically like like dynamic templates essentially you just tell it roughly what you're looking for and then it's going to sit there and try to come up with something for you so they're basically trying to make it so the AI will do everything for you, including wipe your ass. Like it's it's like it'll sign your name, it'll uh, fill in the at for who it's going. It'll 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 uh, I don't know whatever a little small mundane thing it could possibly do. But <laughs> they're going to automate everything. Sheets is only going to be useful to create tables. It doesn't sound like it's going to be helpful for formulas and such yet. Really? Oh man. I mean that's I mean that's one that should be like a number one thing. But <clears throat> so. So Google I.O. came out with a lot of a, a lot of good announcements. And keep in mind, they were definitely running a hype a day. Literally wipe my ass. Uh, <laughs> they were running a little bit behind for a while. Everybody else was coming out with their own AI stuff. And their announcement of BARD initially was super lackluster. Um, and so they're, they were they were definitely the underdog. Uh, and they're, what they delivered today, or yesterday, Wednesday, uh, was, I think, a step in the right direction for them. You know, obviously, they need to cater to people that are that use products, just general pop. Um, and the best way to do that is to uh, incorporate all their tools. So you get a really good breakdown. There you go. Okay, you can look at that. Sorry, I can't do it right now. Can't do it right now. <laughs> so experimental AI converting. Sorry, I only because I saw you post it once. So, um, see, so turn ideas into music with Music LM. My bad. So. Music LM, it's just a music generated uh, uh, language model. You could type in something like, you know, make me a fat beat. And it'll be like, no problem. <laughs> fat beat coming right up. Um, and this is like, you know, neat. I'm not, I'm not part of this yet. I'm not part of this, but you damn right. The second we do, we're going to come and we're going to make some beats. Darn no, fat or fat. So you have, you have to, you have to, you have to probably tell it. Or it's probably not going to know. You probably have to tell it. No, fat. <laughs> that so this is going to open the door or continue to open the door even further or wider or maybe open more doors or maybe just knock out the whole wall to this issue that's stemming up which is music streaming has a two billion dollar fraud problem that goes beyond ai <clears throat> excuse me um this is actually a bloomberg article that magically appeared over here on this site i don't know what the site is but it's here and it works uh and they go over in detail i have some bullet points for you guys about how uh there's issues with people just straight up generating fake songs uh tagging artists or may not even generation uh generating fake you know fake uh, uh uh songs they're making songs and they're tagging as if it's their favorite artist uh and then they're getting hell of views and listens and shit because of that this is independent music label the one that that uh they're demonstrating uh the one that they're talking to here says that they had a song called hey kids that gained popularity on tiktok and youtube and it was exploited by scammers and they created a bunch of copycat versions. So all of a sudden, he's got like versions, all these cover versions, all this stuff all over Spotify. Uh, it says scammers collect streaming royalties from fraudulent versions. Uh, and in fraud, particularly prevalent on platforms such as Spotify and Apple Music, because you could just you could just put any music up there, right? Uh, make all the people get real jobs outside. Oh my God, boomer alert! Hold on. That's I said, boomer. <laughs> and it says it's estimated at least 10% of streaming activity is uh is supposedly fraudulent. So it's a lot. And that's that's they equate that to about two billion dollars in misallocated revenue. Now that's a that's an important number because it's a big number, it's a lot of money, and we already know that the record industry, the music industry, uh, does not really adapt well. <laughs> so we might see, you know, big moves by the music industry to try to prevent, you know, like we talked about the new Drake song that came out like a couple months ago or a month ago or whatever, however long ago it was, and it was a fake song, it was a duet. Uh, all those two billion should have gone to negative pH. It should have. I don't, this is, there's a problem with their, with their accounting because we got, we have so many views we haven't paid for. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So it basically what's happened is with with the advent of AI, people are going to start using services like Music LM and whatever. So now anybody can make music the same way that anybody can make art right now, right? Uh, anybody will be able to make music. Music's going to start flying out. All I mean, there already is such a saturation of music all over, um, and so now we're going to see you know even more. Spotify and and Apple Music and all of that. This is like user generated content. It's gonna be like deviant art, but for music, and that's it. Like your big artists and all that stuff. I feel like the era of like big artists and all that is like gone, <laughs> unless they're the ones that like adapt and they use like the latest technology and all that stuff, so they can be the pioneers in that, right? But for the most part, I feel like yeah, a lot of that stuff is is gonna be disappearing. I mean, when you could just generate a song, whoop, and maybe it sounds good, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Eminem AI with all the all-time classic chainsaw. <laughs> so we see a lot of adaptation. We've been seeing a lot of adaptation happening all over the place. Uh, basically, like survey, oh, oops, surveys and uh, uh, just like think of like a, a AI. Or what's it called? Art station, right? They're very quick to kind of jump on the adaptation train. And it wasn't necessarily for a good, you know, people didn't really necessarily appreciate their approach to it. They wanted you to tag the, the uploaded AI art stuff as AI art, whereas the actual artists on the platform did not want AI art to have any part in the platform, right? Um, so they were like the first because, I mean, they're at the forefront of art <laughs> online. So they were one of the first. And so now we're getting down to, uh, uh, to you know, peripheral services where what do you do with the art? Well, you sell it somewhere, somewhere like a platform like Patreon. So Patreon is this Patreon's policy team is working hard to craft AI guidelines that are creator first and your input can help shape that process. We're excited to hear your perspectives. As always, feel free to contact the team and da, 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 da. So it's a, uh, it's a form, it's a survey, and they're trying to basically get an idea of how, uh, uh, of what people's responses are, would be to them basically adding AI support, right? Or rather, just not enforce a no AI uh, generated media policy, right? Because they wouldn't have one because... And uh, Zazzle also sent out a survey. Zazzle is a... Um, uh, uh, Zazzle is a print-on-demand service, and I know about this because my mom uses this service. And so she actually pulled me over, pulled me out. She's like, "Can you take a look at this survey?" And it, the survey was like, "Do you use these media generate AI generators?" And it was like, you know, Dolly, Midjourney, all the way down, right? It's like, do you use these things? And you click, 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 and then you go through. And it's like, what do you think about that kind of stuff on the platform? Like, everyone's getting feelers out. And these print on demand sites are huge for this because if you can just generate AI stuff all day, then you could just make t-shirts all day. So now these sites are having to deal with the massive influx of generated art. So they're trying to get a feel for it. So they put out a survey to see what people are saying. Not like they could really enforce it anyways, but one way that another platform Another platform who does that does uh, print on demand stuff. Print on demand is like Cafe Press. You understand a Cafe Press or designed by humans. You know, you upload it. You upload like you know some cool art, and then you could print off a shirt for twenty five dollars, and you make like thirty cents on it. That's what print on demand is. You got it. Uh, and avoid copyright. Well, you can't copyright stuff. <laughs> so Redbubble also is is uh, uh, is making small changes to help limit that. They used to have a, a daily upload of 60, 60 designs. So you could upload every single day 60 designs, which is a lot <laughs> for t-shirts and mugs and mouse pads and all kinds of stuff. And they lowered it 30 because, I mean, 60 was way more than reasonable and people abused it. And so now it's 30 and it's 30 across all accounts. So if you have multiple accounts, it's 30 across all accounts. And it says here, if you create multiple accounts in order to exceed this daily limit, all of your accounts will be closed. So they're pretty, they're pretty serious about this. <clears throat> so you get someone else like Mike to do it, pay up. Boy, oh, so maybe you're not good at doing it. It's hard if you want to do something very specific. Why someone when you? Why would you pay someone to do AR if you could do AR? Really confused. Oh, yeah, because it's hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard. No, it seriously is. Man, the, the, the meat sacks that I have seen 
of just like weird flesh and titty. Like it's disgusting. <laughs> it's like scarring. <laughs> but you have to swim through that first in order to make it to the beach, you know, to the desert island. Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Proud demand sites will add the AI generator to their own site so you get a design and select it and print. That, damn, that sounds like that will actually happen. Uh, does red people from stealing shit and selling it on Redbubble? No, I mean like you know you could you could still steal something and upload it, but you know they they have systems in place to try to recognize that and pull it down. Um, and I know they do because my mom made a custom uh, uh, a sticker and it was the Beatles, but it was an I was a silhouette of the Beatles from like Help, you know the Help album where they're all kind of standing, kind of holding hands almost, right? Arms up. Uh, it was a silhouette, but the silhouette was replaced with like rainbow. So instead of being a black silhouette, it was replaced with a rainbow. Super simple. She just wanted to make it so she could make a couple for herself, whatever. And so she did it. She ordered a couple for herself, and then she got hit. And they said, oh, no, this is copyrighted, even though it was just a silhouette. So they do have some systems in place, kind of like Content ID, to find these things that, you know, are copyrighted. Uh, will that, I mean, does it get catch everything? Probably not. Like we, I mean, we're all pretty familiar with copyright around here. We get hit with that shit all the time. <laughs> so we're all pretty familiar with like some of the tools that they could use and how people could get around them and all that. Uh, but you know, it's not really meant to be a, a one stop fix all. It's supposed to be a system that helps kind of moderate to some degree. And then they probably rely on like people reporting things in the future or they look for trends. That's another thing. Trends. If somebody's uploading maximum of 30 every single day, they're going to probably inspect and see what they're uploading, you know, and, and go through with like a fine tooth comb to see if this person is just generating stuff like that's not theirs or something or what. I don't know. I don't know what it's case by case basis. So, uh, but I know they have ways of, uh, of policing this to answer your question. It's just Bob Ross, <laughs> the ghost of Bob Ross coming to check out all your art. <laughs> I remember the poop copyright debacle. Yeah. Yeah. With don't starve. See, see, exactly. Oh, you could get around that. All you got to do is not say poop. <laughs> mm hmm. There's a logo that's already on air during a stuff source comment. Oh, really? For stores of people they hired. Okay, it's brown demand size already for logos. Jeez. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, this actually is a story that uh, <laughs> changed just now, but uh, I'm going to show you guys this video. This is. Somebody who got access to ChatGPT plugins and they had it make a six day meal plan. And actually, let me go pop this thing open while I'm talking here. Um, they had it, they had it make a six day meal plan. Uh, this is just a phone recording that they made. They posted it to Reddit. It says, it says, like, I like eggs. I like this. Here's what I have in my fridge eight sticks of butter, no highly processed foods. And then it says, I need a six day meal plan. And so, what it does with the plugin, it's got Instacart enabled. Instacart, if you're not familiar, is like a grocery store delivery service. So, kind of like Uber Eats, but for groceries. And so, you can see here breakfast is day one breakfast, scrambled eggs, bacon and cheese, dinner, grilled steak with garlic butter. It's going to go through, it's going to list all this stuff. And then, and then once it's done, it's going to go through. It's going to say using and used using Instacart, use Instacart. Here's your Instacart shopping list. Boom. Now you have a list. You click on that. It pops open the page on Instacart. You can order all the groceries you want. So like that's pretty dope. Now, this is a small, this is a small thing that someone just made because it got access. They're like, let me see if I could do this. And so here it is. So <laughs> here's the ingredients. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for that. But I'm thinking also turn around, and probably ask it for the uh for the recipe on how to cook all this stuff, and I'll walk them through it. <sighs> what? <laughs> um so on that note, three steaks and three salmons a week. He's on a keto diet. He's on a keto diet. So he wants to be keto friendly, which means he's gotta eat meat, and then he's gonna die. <laughs> so speaking of <laughs> speaking of plugins uh, if you are a gpt plus user thank you so much Diego, for pointing this out i 100 would have missed this it's just released uh web browsing and plugins are not rolling out in beta so if you're a gpt plus you go to beta features you can activate this and then you too can order a bunch of instacart goodies so what this means is when we have one guy out of like three dudes who have access to plugins, we're not really getting a lot, right? Once we open it up to everybody, now we're going to start seeing people really push it. 
because we're crowdsourcing it now. People are going to start connecting this shit to the internet. They're going to start. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a time for sure. <laughs> I I expect by the end of the weekend, we're going to have, I mean, if you follow like r slash chat GPT pro uh, or maybe even r slash chat GPT, you're probably going to see a lot of like crazy things that people are doing with plugins. Uh, especially the API is up here integrated to other APIs. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's, which is kind of like a, uh, what top described is kind of like if this, then that before APIs. So you could like link a bunch of things together. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Like there's, there's, this is a huge, this is a huge bump. <laughs> there's all these different steps, right? And this is like two steps. You know, we were taking like one step, one step. Okay. Yeah. One step. And then this is like, this is like maybe three steps, big old step. So, ah, having casuals being able to transfer information from one product to another easily. Big. Yeah. For reals. <sighs> Speaking of. Oh shit, I don't understand. Nice. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to hook you guys up. Okay, here's something, here's something I know you'll definitely understand. Okay. All right. If you have one dollar and one spare minute, you can get yourself a girlfriend. Oh yeah. 23 year old Snapchat influencer with millions of followers. The last Snapchatter standing <laughs> so i said there's yeah she created an ai version of herself that will be your girlfriend for one dollar a minute why do i need that i mean i don't know maybe i don't know i don't know i mean i, I, was, I was kind of being facetious you know <laughs> darnell's expensive girlfriend yeah darnell could be a girlfriend too shit or boyfriend whatever be your man be your daddy whatever you want one dollar per minute too much what's a reasonable price one dollar per minute it seems like a lot but you know actual actual like phone sex and girlfriend experience is kind of average around like two dollars a minute so this is a pretty good price considering it's free. Like, I mean, you know, like it's not a lot of overhead. You're not actually committing time and you could be girlfriend to like a lot of people at once. <laughs> is that per minute in voice? Well, here's what it says. It says uh, advanced AI development are already commercialized and we are witnessing what soon would become an avalanche of readily available AI personas pretending to care for you, love you, have sex with you and submit to your weirdest desires. And here's the article. Here's the quote here. It says the option to form intimate relationships with AI influences may lead users to prefer artificial relationships to real ones, says Dr. Robert Brooks, an evolutionary biologist. It says. Da -da 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 -da. God, this guy wrote a lot of books. The option to form intimate relationships with AI influencers may lead to users prefer artificial relationships with real ones. Uh, and then it says his concern is especially pertinent among young users in the throes of puberty who are learning fundamental social relationship and intimacy skills. Again, if you've not seen Joaquin Phoenix in the movie Her, you are absolutely missing out on the idiocracy to AI. <laughs> AI re relationships or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all of that and I just want to hug I mean you could probably buy like a hugging machine or something oh crime I'll give you a hug man <laughs> it's probably spread over actors and actresses too I mean think of cameo right once once cameo starts going down the AI route which you know they will I mean that's the whole business they have and also they have tons of connections with celebrities big and small so they will definitely exercise that. At least I hope so. If not, they should just hire me so they can make them lots of money. <laughs> and then, then you could be friends with Michael J. Fox. I don't know. I, I really couldn't think of anything for a minute there. At least it doesn't break your heart like real people. Oh, oh, you, you haven't seen her. No spoilers, okay? <laughs> yeah, the movie. Joaquin Phoenix, her. Yeah, it's 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 worth it's worth your time. It's weird. And Joaquin Phoenix is just good too anyway. So, you know. Even in his bad movies, he's still pretty good. Uh thanks to Fortnite that runs their AI model. They're able to play nice and stay nice and warm for those hot nights. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, this is I mean, this is we've already talked about, I mean, last week, week before, uh, we talked about there was uh, you know, um, the worries that a lot of the generated content, a lot of the content that you find on OnlyFans and other paid platforms are going to very soon and very quickly start to shift over to AI generated. Um, now, right now, they, it's, it's, it's really, really hard. And it definitely takes a lot of power, a lot of skill, 
um, and a lot of experience to try to generate an image or at the very least consistently generate images that look realistic. You can't just take somebody else's prompt and then just put it in and be like, bam, easy, right? Because the second you go to change things, it's going to fall apart, right? That prompt was carefully tuned one, one comma at a time. <laughs> so that way it was the most flexible as it could be. Don't forget a lot of thirst, a lot of thirst for sure. Being as like the chatbots are not very useful. God, Red, doesn't anything make you happy? <laughs> well, the good news is that you might be able to train ChatGPT to like un un scramble things for you. I don't fucking know, dude. What the fuck, Red? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy sh shit. Well, it's right. Oh, yeah. Wendy's. We we already talked about it, but I forgot to mention uh, on the note of Wendy's because I didn't expect it to come up so soon. Soon. But on the topic of Wendy's, um, one thing to note, because I was curious, right? Like how what percentage of jobs make up fast food jobs? We've already seen uh, in some places like uh, I know that the uh, I'm just years ago mcdonald's across like seriously like 2019 or something like that 2018 the mcdonald's across the street from disneyland uh i got rid of all of their front-end employees and um they only took orders via these like kiosks so you go inside it's but a kiosk where the line used to be and so you go over there do, 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 do. um and so like it was like whoa okay, that's the that's like that to me i was like whoa automation is coming right it's coming for our jobs and all that stuff and this is like now we're replacing jobs in positions where we normally had to have a person that could sit there and listen and hear so when they hear something coming through like this they can actually understand what's happening right understand what the person's saying and like reciprocate and everything so now they're gonna get rid of that so i was just curious like how many employee how many employees are there percentage wise just in california okay so just in california fast food jobs make up 2.2 percent of all jobs and it's at 400 jobs uh it's pretty much about two percent like 1.8 to 2.2 percent across the u.s so and that percentage i mean that it's not gonna be four hundred thousand people and everyone because it depends on what the population is work population but those are the numbers that i pulled um from uh from uh, california gov so california gonna be the first to hit the streets we're already in the streets man cnn's got a whole special on san francisco coming up <laughs> I'm, I'm a little scared to watch it but i have a feeling that's probably gonna be uh some some truth to it <laughs> hate those kiosks worst things in the world i hate when i go up to somebody working a register and I guess they're not, they're only working the register to put in an order that they got like through a mobile app, you know? Uh, and then they tell me to go use the machine. That's actually happened. Where like somebody is transcribing orders from Uber Eats or something, the app. And then I go up to the register for my turn, right? There was nobody there. I'll go up to the register and it's like, oh, can you use the kiosk? I'm like, the fuck? No, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it happened to you too. Yeah, I, I just like, why do you have all these nice people here? But that's that's the boomer in me. <laughs> that's a boomer in me talking. When I had to tell Google I'm hungry and I have automatic deliver food, I have yes, no, you can. That's what the plugins do. <laughs> that's those suits. That's what that's what the plugins do. They make it so that you can do that. You can say hey, I'm hungry. What are you looking for? Oh, I want some food or something. Some steak. I want some steak and some eggs. I want my meat with some meat. Those people are the cup dispensers for you know. Uh, they tell you to use the kiosk. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, fuck those fucking things. <sighs> Lastly, this was, uh, this just came up too. This is pretty fucking funny. Kiosk, we're gonna talk to people. I just order on apps. I have the option too. Man, but, but the, per the personal connection, man. The personal connection. <sighs> the only place you can have a personal connection and, and still get paid is on fucking Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is like you work in a warehouse. Oh, the automation on the front end. We have AI now for our personal connections. Exactly. So speaking of AI, of course, <laughs> I, I found this trailer. When was this posted? Three days ago. It's got a million views. Lord of the Rings by Wes Anderson. AI generated in the sim similar vein to the uh, Balenciaga meme that we were talking about earlier this week or whatever. This is just brilliant. In the quaintest corner of Middle-earth, embark on an epic journey unlike any you've experienced before. This winter, Wes Anderson presents a heartwarming and quirky adaptation of a beloved classic, The Whimsical Fellowship. 
Meet Frodo Baggins, an unassuming hobbit, chosen for an extraordinary task. Guided by the enigmatic wizard Gandalf, Fro <laughs> I, just, I just noticed that was Bill Murray. <laughs> Frodo embarks on a captivating... So, it, it's, it's all AI generated. Obviously, you could see some of the faces and all that, clear, clearly. Lots of 2.5D, right? Lots of parallax, like fake parallaxing going on. You, rent, you render an image. Our quest is clear. I mean, we must destroy the it's really well done. Overcome the eccentricities of our newfound fellowship, and perhaps learn the true meaning of friendship along the way. For this adventure will require wow. a walking stick, antique maps, breakfast, the ring of power, a pipe, a sword, <laughs> and second breakfast. Featuring an illustrious cast of Middle Earth's most distinctive inhabitants. Is it commercial being shittier quality than this? <laughs> Bill Murray, I know. Tilda Swinton, Edward Norton, Leia Saidu, Benicio Del Toro, Adrian Brody, Bob Balaban, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, Ben Stiller, Christoph Waltz, Willem Dafoe, and Owen Wilson. Wow. The Whimsical Fellowship is a refreshingly unique interpretation of Tolkien's timeless tale. Journey into theaters this summer, and remember, not all those who wander are lost. All right. So, if you like this oh. trailer, be sure. Yeah, there's a Star Wars. There's a Star Wars one also that's pretty good. I'll show that after news, but. Um, this is a pretty big step up from some of the other AI videos we'll be watching. Now, this is just creative use of Parallax, right? Parallax 2.5D, taking an image, giving that 3D effect, uh, the face turning and nodding thing, all that stuff. Like, we've seen that used. Actually, we, we found the app that they used for that. Um, but it's probably a bunch of others that do the same thing. So th it's, it's a combination of a lot of things in order to make this happen. But it's still very, 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 very clever. Um, wow. Wow. Anyway, that's it for the news. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching another AI news. Thank you, Red, for being miserable. Appreciate it. Keeping the chat lively. <laughs> you see, you see we're, movies worse. Yeah, yeah. News. Eighty percent speed run. Has it been fast? Forty-two minutes. Woo! Okay, hang out for a second. Chat. We're gonna we're gonna come back and we're gonna watch the Star Wars one because it is actually better than the what than the uh, than the Lord of the Rings one. So, all right. Goodbye.